Shorts. Evergreen numerals, they'll be moving left to right on your internet dial here in the first quarter. The Hoyas in those dark blue shirts and shorts and helmets, they win the opening face off and that will be a story that we will follow with Eric Pacheco we mentioned. Bit of a struggle for the Hounds a year ago. It was a struggle a year ago, it continues to be a struggle. And the Hoyas on the board first, back to the dot. And this was also an interesting area for Georgetown as they lost their primary face-off specialist from a year ago. But so far has not been a problem. They're two for two. Yeah, wing play is going to have to be exceptional for Loyola, not only in this game, but probably this year. I think an interesting story would be, as you mentioned, Georgetown starting a freshman. So not only is he coming off a 31-goal season, he gets the first of the day for the Hounds. And the game is tied at one apiece. Face-off violation this time. So the struggles of the dot continue. Okay, sorry, goal scorers and points getters from a season ago. So they've got a lot to build off of as they try to build off of that late portion of the season and take a step forward this year. And I think the, the question in those types of scenarios when you have a lot of people returning is, you know, are they getting better or have they improved compared to those that they're playing against? So they certainly are familiar with one another and game day scenarios, but have they improved themselves enough to make a difference from the previous year? Did you think that that turned... Patra with his first of the season after 34 a year ago. Another face-off win for the Hoyas. So that was Carson Hall, was. He, the freshman out of the Atlanta area for Loyola. I, I think, you know, the losses are one thing, Glenn, but they're so clean. And you know, that's what I would be very concerned about if I was the Loyola staff right now. Carson Hall, 5'9", 175-pound freshman. It may take a while for them to figure out who they are, although reports are that they had a great scrimmage last week against Maryland. Carson Hall again out there at the faceoff dot, out of the timeout, and the result does not change. Yeah, but what you saw there is, is McGillicuddy went wide on the wing, and so he came in to negate that break. Cut off the path after Who was supposed to go and win? So 4-2 now. Georgetown able to convert out of the timeout. Back to Pacheco, and Pacheco will get the first clean faceoff win of the day for the Hounds. Three. Offside low, Division One shot to the offside, but I take that back. There was some hesitation on, on the slide that enabled James to get his hands free. Offside low, Division One shooter, tough to say. Second of the day for Evan James, 5-2 hounds. We've got all sorts of action in this first quarter. Georgetown wants to go quickly again. So three goals in those two games they played in the tournament. First of the season, Pacheco flicks it back, but can't get to the ground ball himself. That'll go out of bounds and belong to the Hoyas. You know, we have, we have been tough already on James, who's got a first half hat trick for the Greyhounds as they take a 6-3 advantage. First faceoff violation of the half for Loyola. The Hoyas jumped out to 10-2 and 16-3 leads before cruising to a 23-7 victory. Today, the Greyhounds up 5-3 after one quarter. Georgetown, however, continues their dominance at the faceoff dot. Make it eight for... That, that's playing within themselves because they have a, a great understanding of what they're supposed to do and why. First assist of the day for Evan James. Fourth point. The Hoyas, are they going to turn it over? They will. That was the issue for them in the first quarter. Yeah, quick restart here by Loyola, but that was a nice play there by Hall in the trail check, and... and and Coach Toomey said that you know, Hall is still learning how to face off effectively at the Division One level. One of the things that he does well is trade 8-3 with 10-0-3 to play in the second quarter. At some point, I'll ask it out loud, Chris, does Georgetown have to think? I'm not saying any of this is necessarily on Anderson Moore, but do they have to think for a freshman goal in his psyche, do they have a Hoya second team All-American a year ago? And Princeton cuts it to 8-4. But the point being, they've got some recent history in avenging lopsided losses mm -hmm. that they could fall back on going into this game. Given up two quick ones, and they are now in jeopardy of doing this make-it-take-it scenario where Georgetown, as they do, get the ball right back and Loyola playing defense again. Midway point of the second quarter, Georgetown scores back-to-back -back goals out of the Loyola's half. He gets his third to make it 9-5. Sally with his first point of the season. Patra with a four-point half. Prolonged battle for this ground ball. And 
The result does not change. Well, if you're Pacheco and, and your wing, your, your wingman does a great job as a defender, you have to have a check call there, and you have to take hands at that point and pro prohibit that from happening. What a first half for Jordan Ray. Four goals, seven seconds. Loyola's going to have an opportunity here. I'm assuming Georgetown's probably going to press up pretty high. Sally picks it up. And Higgins, yeah, he's just going to have to heave it. Oh, ooh, doesn't count. I don't know. It, boy, it's going to be close. Officials will talk about it. They're counting it. Wow. <laughs> Mustang Sally at the buzzer. Wait, so, but Georgetown still has an opportunity to. But didn't they use both their timeouts? I don't know. Hmm, ref's looking at it right now, Glenn. Now is this in... Again, remind, I, my apologies, I gotta go over the rules. It might be that they're at the end of the half. The refs have the discretion. Let's watch it again. You see the clock down in the corner. I, maybe that might be out with one-tenth of a second left. I think it is, but I was wrong on the last one. Yeah, I right? I think it is. That's unbelievable. In real time, Chris, I, you'll see that my reaction was not up to the moment. Because I think it is. In real time, I thought there was no chance. But You know what they say, what you hear on TV all the time? But is there enough to overturn it? Well, and of course, they called it a goal on the field. Right. So that shows that Loyal has demonstrated great awareness defensively as to where he is at all times and has prevented him from becoming a part of the offense. But as we both know, that can change with a player of his capabilities at any time. Yes, it can change in a moment. Team switch sides as we start the third quarter. And how about that? A face-off win for the Greyhounds. Eric Pacheco comes away with it. Great way to start. Nice job there by Pacheco. Wasn't an easy fence. Good defensive unit. Great conversion there by James. Evan James, the program's active leader in career goals and points with his fourth goal, fifth point of the day, and another face-off win for the Greyhounds to start. Was this a big rope-a-dope all along? Well, that, you know, that looks like an easy ground ball, but it's not by long pole. And, and, and that is not a great yeah, play is, there. But, but when Georgetown's able to get inside, Loyola seems very slow to react. Sullivan, the junior from Maine, expected to step up this season. And Georgetown gets their first faceoff win of the second half as Dylan Hess picks up the ground ball. So this was the danger that Moore pounds in front, 12-7, late in the third quarter. Opportunity to get another faceoff win as that ground ball is picked up by Chase Gregory. Chris Gunkel, two finals already today, elsewhere in the Patriot League. Navy beats Mount St. Vin to seven with 3.29 remaining in the third quarter for Adam Patra, his fourth goal of the day. It's been a heck of a year for the Patra family, hasn't it, Chris Gunkel? Well, it really has. I'm, I'm not a huge follower of hockey, but I am aware of how good his brother is. out there since he left two face-offs ago and you would assume yep yeah. the last two have been taken by Van Buren Wilson Van Buren sophomore from Roswell Georgia was seven of 20 a year ago including one for five off the bench three in the entire first half two of which came on face-off violations needless to say that's big if you want to come out of this with a win for Loyola. You know, Glenn, the increase in shots is not only tough physically, but that wears you down mentally as a defense. Still Wilson Van Buren out there for Georgetown to start the fourth quarter. So now five of seven. Five Correct. Of seven. Correct. It's going to not get spoken about, but James makes a great play there by being in the right spot behind for the rebound and passes it quickly back to Minicus. So really heads up play there, great spacing. It's often hard to do sometimes when you're an offensive player, you just forget that you need a backup. Nice job there by James. 
Franklin's not able to get there in time. And you pointed out earlier, Haley's a distributor. He's not a shooter necessarily. Took just 15 shots all of last year. Yeah, but what he did see right there is he knows what to do when he has his hands free. Question. But this is important. Georgetown first violation here. He thinks it's very vital. The Rock Ryan, that's right on time. Hat tricky. Matt Minnick is his title. Well, I, I, this is this is really amazing at the face of Again, Again, worth pointing out that it's been Van Buren out there for the last few. But even when Ball was out there to start the third quarter, Loyola won a couple to start quarter number three. And they've had 29 left to go. Brandaro, his first of the day. Had 26 goals, 23 assists a year ago at Princeton. His first goal is a Hoya. Cuts it to 15-10. Face-off violation. Loyola gets another possession. And just have not been able to keep up the momentum that they had with ball on the field. Pass kind of have to take the shot. Um, I, I didn't like the angle, and I thought there was still a lot of time on the clock. But um, I improved wrong once again. Yeah, correct. The goal is what matters, obviously. I said it was Haberman, it was Luke Murphy, my apologies. Luke Murphy gets his first assist of... I mean, you have a lot of options there for Loyola in terms of, of firepower. You know, I don't... Kamish really... I don't know if Kamish has anything today, uh, but that's no. another formidable offensive player. Greyhounds in front, 18 to 10, under two minutes to play. Seth Higgins is another individual that's capable 